So once again, the construction industry is at the forefront of major economic news. The economy of the United States is very much affected by construction in many ways, not just the employment part or the uh, financial investments in construction, but it affects everything else, including interest rates, including personal finance. In California, they've been trying to um, get rid of the housing gap, right? By getting more people into homes, less homeless people, less people paying too much by building new apartments. But they've been trying to jumpstart construction for several years now. It's not working. Part of the reason it's not working is because the numbers don't pencil out. Interest rates are high. They're going up even more. And fewer people um, are willing to work in the industry of construction. Not many people are qualified, but what's happening in the meantime is it's creating more renters than homeowners. And a new article that came out just this week says that renting can age you faster than smoking or obesity, right? It means that if you're a renter, the stress, economic instability, uncertainty, your rent going up, and even where you live, because most apartments and rental properties are in places that are less healthy than where homeowners live, can affect your health and can age you faster. So in order to counter that, they're trying to build more rental properties in many states, especially states that are hard hit by homelessness or high rent. California being the first one that comes to mind, obviously, but they're not doing a good job in getting these projects off the ground. There's a lot of impact fees, coastal commission fees, permit fees, and even rejection of applications because either pushback from the neighborhood or government intervention. This is actually creating a big game of chicken with the economy because interest rates are going up again. The mortgage rates for single family home purchases now hit 8%. And if you've been watching our channel for any more than a year, you've this is not news to you. This is not a surprise. We've predicted that rates will be over 8% by the end of this year. This one turned out to be true. We also expect them to be near 10% by 2025. And that may seem like a long way away, but it's really only a year and a half away. We're almost at the end of 2024. I'm sorry, 2023. By the time you get into spring of 2025, maybe 18 months down the road, rates will be near 10%. That's going to make more homeowner purchases difficult because people won't be able to afford the mortgage. And it'll also increase rents because current property owners that are renting, if they're purchasing a property or have to refinance, their rates are higher, inflation will affect their cost, and more importantly, they'll know that the market for people is going to be higher because fewer people that want to get out of the rental rat race will be able to because interest rates are higher. There'll be more demand for rental properties. So expect that rates will continue to be high. Again, we don't say this from a place of just our personal opinion. We always look at the data. And if you look at the top of this article, it says, stock inch higher says evaluate Fed comments on economy. What are the comments? They said that in inflation is still going to go up and they're going to have to raise rates again. It proves the point that interest rates are going to go up and mortgage rates will go up. So if you're in the construction industry, be aware that the states are wanting to jumpstart construction, but they're having a tough time because more people are coming into the rental market and it's also more difficult to get these projects started. I know you have an opinion about this. If you're in the construction trade or building industry, let us know in the comments below what kind of problems you're running into with permitting, applications, zoning, uh, or even the fees that are associated with getting a project off the ground. And as far as renting is concerned, do you see where there's a bigger gap between renters and homeowners? Is there a gap financially? Is there a gap um, in terms of health outcomes, in terms of even um, the job prospects for that person? Because if you're a homeowner, maybe you can be a little more stable in looking for employment. What is your opinions about that? What are you seeing in the real world in your um, in your geographic area?